this is a patient. She um, experienced uh, lung embolism, and uh, she had uh, this was an incidental finding, and then uh, further examination were initiated to exclude um, uh, malignancy. And uh, first, uh, Dr. Patak will show you now um, the um, uh, radiological examinations of this patient. This is um, uh, sometimes later in abdominal CT, and what we see or, or what we saw was uh, in the beginning we saw this nodule here. It's in the hilus of the liver. It's at the top of the pancreatic head, and it's very difficult to say if it's a hilar lymph node or if it's in, conti in continuity to the pancreatic head. Um, we then did a, a an MR, and again, the MR showed, this is a T2 weighted image. Uh, where you see here is the pancreatic head. And we'll zoom the thing a bit. And then you see there is the pancreatic head, and, and there is this you don't see that very much, very good, but you, here you can see it. There you can appreciate this is the, the same thing that we, we saw, and it's very difficult to really say if it's coming from the pancreatic head to the top or if it's a lymph node. And um, uh, unfortunately, this wasn't the only finding that we saw. Um, we found some very small implants. You see there's a lymph node up here, and then we we went on and we say, if you look at this, there are some tiny punctual implants. There's a long stricture, again, this one. It's not, it's not small bowel or bowel. It's just an implant going from one side to the other. And then if we go to the um, uh, lower abdomen, you see there's free fluid. We don't see that good here. Um, there's free fluid and again more implants uh, that show that this patient has um, peritoneal carcinomatosis and this solid lesion that was the only lesion that was big enough that we saw. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So um, the purpose of this examination is now that we have to carefully evaluate the pancreas and uh, the question is, uh, is it now a pancreatic mass or is it a parapancreatic mass? And I'm uh, very honored that uh, Rob Hawes and Dr. Rogelides from Columbia will perform now this examination, please. Okay, Thank well, you, uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's certainly a pleasure for me to be here in the US suite with Dr. Rodriguez. And we will try to, uh, try to make some sense uh, and try to make uh, things a little bit clearer. So um, for anybody who is, um, uh, watch me to do EUS. Uh, for me, it's very, very important uh, that we examine the lesion, but I want to explain how we get to the lesion. So uh, by the CT and MRI scan, we sort of have a general idea of where this is. Uh, and I'm going to start uh, here uh, at the GE junction. So if you see endoscopically, do you have the endoscopic? Ah, perfect. Yes, yes. So here the is the endoscopic image, uh, and this is the GE junction. You get a, a little uh, brief uh, look at the squamocolumnar junction here. So this is my uh, starting point uh, for looking at the uh, body and tail and the, the genu area of the pancreas. So now I will switch uh, primarily to ultrasound. When you start in this position, almost always um, you will get liver. If you torque clockwise, you'll, you'll cross the inferior vena cava, and then if you torque more, you get to the uh, aorta. What you will generally see, there's a little bit of calcification in the aorta here, but what you will see is the crura of the diaphragm. So if you advance the scope a little bit from the crura, then you will see the celiac uh, axis. So here is the, the celiac axis here. And then we're going to use that as a directional marker to follow uh, and find the pancreas. So there's a celiac. 
I'm going to push in the scope a little bit. There's the celiac. There's the bifurcation of the celiac right here. Okay, the bifurcation right here. I'm going to push in just a little bit. And then you come up to the pancreas. So here is pancreatic tissue. If I torque counterclockwise, I go down toward uh, the head of the pancreas. If I torque clockwise, here's the, the portal vein confluence here. Here's the splenic vein, superior mesenteric vein. And you can follow the portal vein now if you pull back on the scope and torque counterclockwise you can follow the uh, portal vein into the liver. So there's the portal vein going into the liver. So this is the alternative way to find the pancreas, is to go into about uh, oh, between 45 and 50 centimeters to the middle of the liver, find where the portal vein comes out of the liver, follow that, torque clockwise now to follow that, and when you get the confluence, then always the pancreas will be right there. Torque clockwise and you'll go toward the tail. Counterclockwise goes toward the head. And so here is the, uh, the head of the pancreas down here. And if I torque just a little bit more and tip up on my up down just a little bit, here we get uh, the lesion. So uh, I I think this is difficult uh, because it's not the um, it's not the up down that's important. It's torquing sideways, and by the time I I'm uh, sort of right adjacent to the lesion, right adjacent to the lesion, you don't see pancreas quite as well. If I torque more, then pancreas comes into play. Um, that being said, um, this, this also doesn't look too much like a lymph node to me, but it's certainly possible. And then you can see here there is a lymph node type structure right here. And then you can see the liver is coming into view right here. So um, I think it's a, 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 a very, very difficult call. This is a it's a homogeneous uh, area, uh, so the, which would go along with a lymph node. As you go deeper here, it sort of becomes uh, more obscure um, here. Maybe this is another lymph node here, maybe. I torque clockwise. Here's normal pancreas. There's pancreatic duct. Here's pancreatic duct. You can see that the parenchyma is completely normal. And I think that is one sort of uh, indication that maybe this is an extra pancreatic process. You would think that a pancreatic, uh, let's say an adenocarcinoma, would cause obstruction of the pancreatic duct and you'd see distal changes. But as I torque clockwise here uh, to follow the pancreas out, here's pancreas, pancreas, pancreas. That's all normal pancreas. So I, I think uh, Stefan uh, felt like this was probably peripancreatic. And I would say uh, I uh, tend to agree with him. Uh, I think we should be seeing more changes within the uh, pancreatic parenchyma uh, here. The duct is completely normal uh, as it runs past this area. The duct uh, or the pancreas upstream of this lesion is normal. So I, I, I think it's probably uh, peripancreatic. So I, I think we're a little bit limited on time. I think you could, uh, I could do elastography uh, on this lesion. I could do contrast agents on this lesion. But the fact of the matter is, is that um, as we've coined the term before, tissue is the issue. I can use elastography, I can guess whether it's hard or soft, malignant, benign, et cetera, but, uh, and I can use contrast, see if, it's, uh, so if it enhances or doesn't enhance, but none of that is going to be specific enough uh, for, um, to make a, a diagnosis uh, specific enough. 
So uh, this is located very close to the stomach, but in this circumstance, there is not on-site cytopathology. Even if there was on-site cytopathology, we believe that this is going to require, to make a definitive diagnosis, this is going to require molecular staining. So we need to get a sufficient volume of tissue in order to get um, molecular staining. So we've chosen to use a 20 gauge um, echo tip. So this is a Procore echo tip. Maybe if they can show, if you can get a room view. Yeah. Um, you have the external view, please. If you can uh, turn on the room view for just one moment. There we go. Yes. And yes. then zoom in. This is um, the Procore echo tip. It's 20 gauge. And uh, so for the gauge of the needle, 20 gauge is uh, a very good uh, gauge of needle to get um, a sort of core tissue or sufficient volume of tissue. So this has a nice flexible um, uh, catheter to it. We're going to advance it down the scope. And so I, uh, what I like to do is I like to have the, the sheath as far into the scope as possible, at least to engage it um, onto, the, onto the channel. So I've, I've pulled the, the sheath back as far as it will go because I would rather now control it, uh, the, uh, the sheath, uh, after it comes out. So... Uh, Okay. You use the finding technique in this one? Uh, yeah. So we'll talk about the, the, uh, the technique here in just a moment. Let me just, uh, okay, here we go. So now that I'm, I'm ready, I will adjust the sheath. So, um, oh, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to just start the sheath out. Aspirate, okay. So here is the sheath coming into view. What I like is just to have the sheath barely into view uh, in the upper right hand corner. And so now we're ready to go. I now need to locate this lesion again. Here we go. Okay. Now I'll uh, go down here with a Procore. We leave it in, I think. I'm going to pull back just a little bit. And maybe can you brace the scope? Yeah, perfect. So I just uh, get the scope braced just a little bit. You like to have the target at about 6 o'clock. Okay. I'll start my needle out. Now I'm going to use my elevator now. Torque to get on it. I should uh, have shown you just uh, briefly we should check for uh, vasculature in the trajectory of the needle. We don't see any vasculature there. So now I, I'll advance the, the, the uh, needle just a little bit, indent the tissue, okay, indent the tissue, and then it needs to be a staccato push. So now I'm going to ask for the uh, stylet uh, to be slowly withdrawn. Now the key here I don't use suction, okay? It, it's soft. And it's soft, yeah, yes. it's very, very soft. And what I do is three or four, three or four uh, trajectories, mm -hmm. it, uh, or three or four passes in one trajectory. Then what I try to do is to remove the, the needle from the lesion without coming back across the gut wall change the trajectory, so I've gone down on my up, down, and now go back into the tissue again. And then I'll make three or four more passes here. You don't use uh, suction. So um, we've, we've done a number of studies. We've just uh, completed a, a, a randomized trial of suction and no suction with a uh, 25 and 22 gauge system. And uh, the only thing that suction does uh, is it uh, produces more blood. 
Uh, it's not helpful with rows, and it doesn't help with the diagnosis. In this case, we sort of want to get sort of core tissue. And um, so I, on a soft lesion like this, at least with the first pass, I will not use suction. Uh, and uh, finding technique. Hi, Rob. Hi, yeah. Rob. Yeah, we saw a very nice uh, technique. And uh, thank you very much.